two videos here that I thought were important to to play. Uh, this is the president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, um, talking about NATO, talking about uh, the response from the West, uh, what he has been doing. Uh, and then also I've got another video here um, as well uh, talking about how he feels like he is the number one target, him personally, and uh, he is still uh, staying in Ukraine. He has been offered a safe passage away from Ukraine but it appears that he is staying with his people um, as of this moment. And so I want to play these videos because I find them to be important. So let's watch. So again, uh, I'm just going to lower the audio here a little bit and I'll be reading the subtitles. Today I have asked 27 European leaders whether Ukraine will be in NATO. I have asked directly, everyone is afraid. No one answers. But we are not afraid. We are not afraid of anything. We are not afraid to defend our country. We are not afraid of Russia. We are not afraid to talk to Russia. We have been left alone in defending our nation. Who is ready to fight with us? I don't see anybody. Who is ready to give Ukraine a guarantee to join NATO? Everyone is afraid. So, that's an important statement because it's true. Uh, now, whether or not you, you know, have criti critiques of NATO, uh, a lot of critiques of NATO I find to be valuable. Um, but at the end of the day, if Ukraine wants to join NATO, if the people of Ukraine want to join NATO, why not let them join NATO? Uh, NATO is not, you know, some like fungus that's growing on the wall. Uh, at the end of the day, people feel either safe with Russia or they feel safer with NATO. Uh, this uh, whole construction here um, is very bizarre, right? Like, you know, we're, we're building these superpower alliances. Um, but again, if I have the choice to join NATO or Russia, I would choose NATO any time of the day because Russia is an extremely authoritarian government. And again, they are taking Ukraine by force. If NATO wanted Ukraine, would NATO invade Russia or uh, Ukraine and, and take it by force? I don't think so. Uh, is NATO spearheaded by a genocidal maniac? I mean, you could make the argument, right? You know, that some of the presidents uh, that orchestrate NATO are, are pretty genocidal. I would say probably every president of the United States history is pretty genocidal. That's true. Uh, but again, um, it needs to be understand that the imperial uh, aggression here by Putin is extremely uh, severe and it's not going to stop with Ukraine. There is no reason. I see absolutely no reason why Putin would do something so destructive and then stop at Ukraine. Okay, so he's going to take over Ukraine and then chill and then chill. Okay, they're going to take over Ukraine and then everything's good. We're going to go, every, everything's fine. We're going to sing songs. You don't think they're interested in other post-Soviet states? I mean, Vladimir Putin has explicitly said that uh, he feels like Ukraine is not a country. It is a colony uh, from the West and that they have overtaken Ukraine from Russia. He feels that Ukraine is still a part of Russia, uh, given that he does not agree with the Soviet Union dissolution um, and that he wants to make Russia great again, so to speak. Um, and again, uh, so in my opinion... NATO leaving Ukraine out to dry, it's just running out the clock. Uh, now, again, running out the clock, there might be value in running out the clock. If there's going to be nuclear fallout and nuclear fallout happens tomorrow versus a year from now, I mean, at least we get to live another year, right? Uh, so, it, but again, it needs to be understood that Ukrainian uh, people, uh, specifically the president here, uh, are making these statements public because they want uh, to pressure NATO in some capacity to help them. Uh, even if it's not directly with NATO forces, even if it's just supplying arms and weapons to, uh, you know, people in Ukraine, uh, you know, and that kind of stuff. Again, it's, 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 it is shocking and it is horrifying uh, that the international community has literally just abandoned Ukraine. And it is just a show to watch on television right now. We're all watching Ukrainian people be massacred by a genocidal freak and it's entertainment. It's in the entertainment section. Um, and that's very sad. Uh, but again, here's another version of this statement, uh, or another part of this or whatever uh, that I want to talk about here that's also very uh, important. This morning, we are all alone in defending our country, just like yesterday. The most powerful forces in the world watch from afar. 
have yesterday's sanctions persuaded Russia, we see in our skies and feel on the ground that they are not enough. According to the information we have, the enemy has de designated me as target number one. My family is target number two. They went to destroy Ukraine politically. They want to destroy Ukraine politically by destroying the head of state. So again, um, the uh, you know the president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, is again if if he gets killed, what Russia and Putin want to do is install a puppet uh, to make Ukraine a quote you know still independent state. I don't know what that's going to mean for um you know the the other two quote unquote independent republics. Are those going to be independent republics, and then Ukraine is going to be another one, and that's going to be three countries? I have no idea, and they're all of course going to be Russian uh, puppet countries. Um. You know, like, it, it, who knows? I don't know. Um, so, this, like, again, there is no indication at all um, that Putin would want to stop with Ukraine. If his entire purpose of invading Ukraine, uh, Ukraine is to make Russia great again, um, you know, there's no reason why they wouldn't do so with the other post-Soviet states. So, um... It's not good. It's not good. And you can see very clearly that Zelensky is very, very, very much so pushing NATO uh, in the direction of helping out Ukraine more. Um, and again, we'll see how NATO responds. <sighs> but it's uh, it's very scary for sure. Um, very scary. Uh, I also want to just like underline that the mayor of Kiev as well is apparently uh, fighting in the war itself. Uh, that's another thing. The you know Kiev, I believe, is the capital of Ukraine, if I if I am correct. And the mayor of the capital city is taking up arms and fighting in the war. Um, you know, obviously, political leaders have the opportunity to escape uh, more so than average civilians. Uh, but it appears that even the political leaders of Ukraine are standing their ground um, and doing their best in this scenario, um, which is a pretty. It, you know, it's it's. It's, it's good to see that. Um, so, there you go.